So let's uh, let's head into scarlet colored glasses and talk all things Huskers football, uh, and then we can talk about the state of the program and uh, this this uh, seventh uh, loss in a row. Is that right, Anki? I mean, it's been like three hundred and thirty some days now since we've experienced a win. Um, it was against Northwestern last year, it wasn't was it? Northwestern yeah. last year in week five or whatever it was. Yeah, early October. Um, it's been a very long time. Um, I mentioned the 30 losses under Scott Frost. He's on 15 and 30. Um, yeah, yeah, there is our record in one score games versus with, with Scott as head coach, pretty extraordinary stat there. Um, and, uh, you know, as a, as the red cast, we've experienced 40 some losses. So, um, one of these years, this is really going to turn around we're going to have a, a lot of fun on this show. Um, and hey, you know, the season is not over. I mean, I've listened to a lot of the local radio as well as the national stuff. I don't know if you guys tried to get a sense of uh, Husker Nation over the last 48 hours. Uh, and, you know, there's there's some overreaction, but actually I was somewhat proud overall of some of the local radio guys taking a relatively measured approach here. I mean, obviously the conversation of will Scott Frost survive this season or even just get uh, anywhere past October 1st was a, a conversation uh, du jour today, but I mean, you know, I think there also is some level heads that said that, you know, just one game, uh, you know, you go beat Oklahoma in a few weeks and you're three and one. That's what you're hoping to be anyway after uh, four games. So, uh, you know, there's still a lot to be to be seen. But Honky, let's just talk a little bit about what we saw there on Saturday, um, it, because it did seem a lot like what we would have saw a year ago. Um, where we actually play some pretty good football at times. Offense uh, is explosive. Uh, we throw the ball a lot. Uh, we can't run. And um, ultimately, Northwestern plays classic Big Ten football, wears down our defense. Uh, that's something we didn't see as much last year and ultimately uh, pulls out the victory. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I saw there, there were positive things, and I didn't see it as mistake-prone, certainly, as what the Illinois game was a year right. ago, where we were – just couldn't get out of our own way. I mean, we only had one penalty for five yards. Uh, there was some clean football being played from a special team standpoint. Really, overall, I was pretty pleased with the execution. Maybe if I had to even question any execution on any one special teams play, it would actually been maybe the first punt that we didn't catch it like the six or seven and it bounced to the two. I mean, that's about as close. And I'm getting really yeah. nitpicky there because before that kick even happened and Northwestern's around the 50, I'm sitting there with Mac and, and Jack and Kluver. And I'm just like, watch this. They're going to kick us down to the two. Just be prepared for it. They're going to kick mm -hmm. us to the two. And they did. But I was proud of how we responded. We didn't go and you know snap the ball over our head and fumble it in the end zone or get a, a holding in the end zone and, and have a safety. We we made it through that kind of adversity. And Bushimi got the ball out to the five. Bushimi kicks it with the, the, the you know, out-of-bounds marker right behind his feet. And he kicks a great kick down to the 50 that is fair cut. I was like, that's a good – transition where we didn't blow something up real improvement uh, in that regard from a year ago where if we could find a way to blow it up especially against illinois we did so there was a lot of really positive things there um that i was seeing in, in those areas the the run pass ratio which we will definitely hit on here that that this is not a that's not a run pass ratio for success in this conference um it was 42 to 31 and that's with two of the 31 being sacks so yep. really it's 44 to 29 um, and we've got to find some kind of happy medium between I've been saying all off season, I want mobile QBs. And I thought we have that and we went, but I don't want 25 carries a game from the quarterback either. Right. And we've right. gone from 25 to basically one carry a game. And then yeah. and, and I don't that think was our offense, quarterback sneak essentially at, at the goal line for the touchdown. We need more than that. Uh, we need the quarterback's legs to be involved to, I think, make things easier for the rest of the run game. It's too easy just to say, ah, the O-line's not getting any push or anything like that. We need to be able to to tease or, and and stress the defense sideline to sideline a little bit to open up some things up the middle, too. Yeah, you know, we'll get into scoring explosion here in just mm -hmm. a second, Honk, but let's let's do the – yeah, one more tweet there, the Fitzgerald quote. So let's talk a little bit about that first, and then let's sure. break down that offense because I've got some questions for you, I guess. Uh, so here's a, a tweet or a, a quote from Fitzgerald in the post game presser, I guess, saying this was a good test, but we have recent division titles. There was one team on the field today with a championship culture. And in the end, culture prevailed. Um, ow. I mean, that's Fitz saying that that <laughs> is it's not really his style, but no. it, a lot of a lot of the Big Ten coaches love don't to take shots at Scott Frost. They, they don't, don't like don't Frost like at all. 
no um it's it's really interesting honestly and um we'll talk a little bit more about what scott said in his uh press conference here but it just it's really interesting to hear that quote um because every time one of these coaches has an opportunity boomer to take a shot at scott frost they do it you know and i, I don't know what that's saying um but it, it seems really unusual because on most cases they're pretty cordial with each other it's a fraternity there you know and um, it doesn't seem like Scott is, is welcome in the Big Ten one right now. Well, I guess maybe they've just adjusted to him finally. So, <laughs> you know, make of it what it is. Uh, uh, I don't know. I I mean, did Fitzgerald actually say that at a presser? I, I didn't see it, but I don't know if he did or not. But we've seen those kind of comments from other coaches. and I, I, I heard I, another radio. I think it was the Hell Varsity um, uh, radio show with Chris Schmitz. Uh, okay. Uh, with, yeah, and I suppose part of it is just – yeah, we made it easy to pick on ourselves, I guess. When you lose games like this, it's it's going to happen. You know, when you were the yeah, formerly yeah. a big big power and you're down, and that's just the way it is. I mean, that's going to happen. So yeah, and it, it it points to the idea that Northwestern, just like other Big Ten teams, seem to look they they're simply just playing the waiting game until they feel like. I mean, a that's generally how they play a game anyway. They don't want to make mistakes. They're just going to try to be a consistent. Um, you know, performance, but they also know that Nebraska will likely shoot themselves in the foot at some point, and they're going to take advantage of that. Yeah, and that's kind of the the tough thing about it, I think, where if you do want to talk about culture or whatnot, you see the difference between what we've had recently and the Big Ten. It's not like Northwestern didn't make mistakes in that game. They had a fumble. They missed a field goal. They had eight penalties. They had eight penalties. They had some really dumb play calls at times. They... I mean, they repeatedly set themselves behind schedule by missing first down plays a lot. They dropped balls. They did a lot of things that we did. They don't let those things just completely derail them. We do those things, and we just don't seem to have an answer a lot of times. And they know it seems that way for a lot of games. Those things go off the rails, and we don't be able to. We we just don't recover from that the way other teams seem to be able to in the Big Ten. Yeah. Rob, what were you thinking when you saw the onside kick? Um, Were you like, oh, my God. Well, I can't use I I won't use that kind of language on the on the show because I I, I, I was at a work event. I was walking across the uh, northern Colorado football field, actually watching it on my phone because I was checking in with a client and. I saw it and and my first thought in my mind was, what the hell is he doing? Like, I thought that we were fixing (laughs) this because because I can honestly say I in my 48 years of life, I have seen a lot of football professional in college and I've seen a lot of onside kicks, but there's usually like a good scenario for it, right? Like it's the fourth quarter. You're trying to get the ball back because you're down one score and you just scored a touchdown. I have never seen a coach kick an onside kick after taking, uh, you know, scoring two back-to-back touchdowns, taking an 11 point lead for the second time in the game and then lining up and kicking an onside kick that wasn't even a very good onside kick, I might add. No, it, it wasn't. And, uh, it the was friend not. of the show, Brendan Frankie, I'd, I'd love to ask him about that sometime. Um, kind of like, why did you kick it to that guy? Because it was nothing like that movie, The Replacement, where he's looking up and down the field, looking for the one guy who's scared and kick it to him, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it was like I'm, I'm guessing when you kick it to a fullback, the one guy on the on the field that probably has the best hands out of anybody, like you're not kicking it to the right guy. Yeah, I think he's a captain they kicked it to well, even. Right? Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't understand it. Um, and maybe maybe it's just me i've seen a lot of people say that it's just one play it didn't it we had a whole quarter and a half to fix it well guess what in my opinion they did that they didn't recover it and that was like the one moment that this team like needed to just look at themselves and go oh god here we go again like it just kind of felt like all the air came out of it like from that point on in my own head i was just like oh my god they really might lose this game when, yeah, when that, it felt that, like that point, 20 seconds uh, before I thought they were going to win it. Like I was just like, they're absolutely going to win. There's a, uh, there's a kid that goes to uh, Northern Colorado, Connor Creech. He plays on the basketball team. He's from Hastings, Nebraska. And he was at this event with me and he's watching with me on the phone, right? He's like, he's on the basketball team at UNC. We're standing there BSing, watching the game. And we're like celebrating high fiving. I got this like six foot five kid hugging me in the middle of this large event with 1500 people there screaming, yelling at the top of his lungs, go big red. And then all of a sudden, like, the language he used after that onside kick is the language I wanted to use tonight. And yeah. I, I'm sorry, I'm really still not over it. I'm just trying to smile and nod politely. Well, I think I think some of it is, you know, it's one play, right? And I think that's important, but there's also this thing, momentum in a game. Yep. 
We had 28 points at that point, 35 minutes into the game. 28 points. You are on track at that point with 25 minutes left. You're on point. We're going to score 38 to 45, probably somewhere in that range. Yeah. It's kind of sure. kind of the we're thought. Yeah. And so the idea that, you know, hey, we're doing well, um, let's let's make a really risky play. It's 25% odds that you're gonna you're gonna get a, a, a onside. That's roughly about 25% of them come in. So it's not real good odds. It's and you're putting your defense in a really bad spot. Um, that had not been successful all day. Let's that let's, hadn't been. There's so many questions I have in my head about it because Coach Frost. I mean, if nothing else, he was at least accountable after the game. He said, "I that's on me. I called it. I did that." My question though is is from a coaching staff perspective, is that something that Bill Bush, you know, did he agree yeah, with it? Did, do they know. have the ability to say, "Hey, you know, can I veto you here? This isn't, you know, this isn't the right time to do this." Yeah. Is Eric Shenander over there sitting? Sitting there saying, "Hey, I don't want to, you know, coach." Yeah, give I, me I, all eighty yards, coach. I can stop go when you give me eighty, you know. Because <laughs> Northwestern like all season, game all game long, long, Northwestern has shown they they made mistakes on first downs. They had penalties at times that put them behind. Make force them to go eighty yards. Force them every time to do that. They'll take up a bunch of ch- a chunk of time too in the process, but force that to happen. And th- take that's up all the, the time you want. We're up eleven. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, we could have stopped him, forced a field goal. I just, missed, from my perspective, earlier in the game. from my perspective, what I don't like seeing is very strange things in football games that you never see anyone else do. That's the things I don't like. If you go yeah, back to the Illinois know. game a year ago, you never see guys run into the end zone to catch a punt and then, you know, throw it out of bounds for it. It just never happens. So those are the, like, you don't want to see that stuff. You don't want to see 30 yards of penalties on one play. Like we had last year where you intercepted a ball, but no, now you've hit the quarterback and then you taunt them and then they get, you know, first downs. Those are weird moments in games where it's like only us, right? I've never, I, I can't think of a time I've seen someone choose to kick an onside up 11, five minutes into the second half. I just don't get it. I, I, I don't get it. Even if we landed on it, I don't get it. And yeah, that's not revisionist. I'm not looking back on that now and saying that I, I wish I had the guys. <laughs> I wish Mac was sitting here with me right now. Those guys, <laughs> we all, everyone here, everyone sat there at that moment and said, what in the world was that Brock Heward went on and just, uh, you know, m- immediately was like, I, I don't get it. So <laughs> that's not the only reason we lost. I want to be very clear though. Sure. That's not the only reason we lost, but my goodness, that I think you can point to that time as that was a moment where, Things shifted. Did that feel like the clipboard moment, like from the Illinois game last year, where he's like, "Oh, they lined up in a weird front, took the clipboard, start calling the offense." Right? It's like all of a sudden, this onside kick felt like a clipboard moment with Bill Bush, where he's like, "Let me do this on special teams. I know what I'm." Yeah, doing. it's yeah, possible. It, it, I kind of wondered that. I wonder if he felt like you know when Northwestern went for it on fourth and short, when everyone said they probably shouldn't have and succeeded. It's almost like he took that as a challenge. They're showing they want to win, so I have to do the same. I mean, I don't know. That's yeah, that's such a bizarre risk. choice. I still don't understand it. Risk it days like. days later. I I seriously I, I never lose sleep when, whenever this team loses. Like I just don't. don't? I, I no, I don't. I haven't like, slept good in two days. I, I dude, I'm a Raiders fan. I've said this. Like I've seen so many losses in the last twenty years. Like it doesn't phase me as much. I go through the stages of Kubler Ross's like you know death and dying like faster than anybody you know when it comes to football but i seriously woke up like i had to get up in the middle of the night and move out to the couch because i was tossing and turning so much on saturday night into sunday and i never do that and this is might be the first time i can say that nebraska football has really made me lose sleep the day after the game not the excitement for the because i got up at six in the morning the day of the game i was so excited i woke up i was like it's football baby yeah yeah and i woke up on around. sunday and i was like i didn't i never want to watch another game again in my life <laughs> Well, uh, that's we've probably beaten the the onside kick um, well enough. Yes, yeah, so uh, it, it, it wasn't a successful during the game, and uh, we can can let it go. But it definitely might be what something that we'll look back at at the end of this season and, and really see if it ends up being a signature moment in the uh, Scott Frost era.